Hello friends, welcome to the Pega Lab and uh, let's continue with our Pega interview questions and answers. Okay, in our last video, uh, we were discussing about the this question. There is one function and uh, we have made few changes to that function role. Okay, and uh, after code deployment to the production environment, and that function is failing. Have you ever get this issue? And what do you think? Like, how can you fix this one? What do you think about that one? So, if you are if you are asked this question like this, what is your answer? The answer is yes. Whenever there are changes to the function, there is a probability that it get failed. It might not work. So, we can generate the library and function to start it working. Okay, I'll show you. Like, uh, I'll open one function records technical function let me open one function this is one function when i go to the java math tab here here if you see there is this is a generate library and generate function so when we click on generate library library will be regenerated and then when we click on the library function after clicking these two buttons like it starts working Okay, you can answer like that. We can regenerate them to start working. Okay, that is the question. Now, let's come to the next real-time scenario question. Okay, normally uh, in interviews, mostly you will be asked like uh, real-time, real-time questions. Whatever the issues that happen to them. For suppose, I am taking one interview. Recent in the past one week, I might remember there might be some issues happened. Or I worked on some functionalities, and I asked the question if I'm taking one interview. Okay, so this is one of that type of interview questions I'll ask. So there are few data records which don't get updated frequently, and we need to fetch them from some other applications, and we need to use them for our case processing. Okay, so. The question will be like, uh, how do you handle this one? Like, do you fetch all the records every time for every case? Or what is your thought about that one? So you will be asked differently. Like, uh, whenever you ask this kind of question, like you need to fetch a list of records, okay, from some other application, or you need to fetch a list of records from the Pega database. And you need to use that list of records for the all case processing. Mostly for each case, we use that one. Whenever you are asked this question, that question is for the node level database. You need to remember one thing. Whenever we are using some record, some data, like for drop down values, we drop down values will be there for all case types, all cases, right? So drop down values or operator records, assignment operator records, work baskets. So some kind of data will be there, which will be used for all cases. How do we handle like every time do we run the query and go to the backend database table, get the data and the <coughs> use it here? The answer is no. We have node level database. We use the So what is node level database? Node level database is something like uh, the database will be loaded on the uh, loaded and that will be sitting in the clipboard and it is available for all the requesters present in that node. Okay, for that every requester, for every user on that node logged into that node, they will have it available for each thread for each case. Okay, so now the question is, if you are asked like, do you fetch all records every time for each case? You need to tell them that no, we cannot run the, we not, we cannot do the connect rest or connect soap. We cannot call the API and fetch that much of data every time. If you do that, it will be a performance issue. You need to mention that point. In this situation, getting the data from other application using the service calls are querying the database and uh, for every case getting the data will be a performance issue 
instead of that we can use the node level database and we can give as the data is not updated frequently we can give the database will be expired for every 24 hours after 24 hours the database will be expired and whenever whoever refer the database next time then the database will be created freshly the service call happens and the database will be created freshly okay now um, we can answer differently this question okay how can we answer differently like first suppose we have some other application like currency rates or some policy plan information data or some processing codes for claim processing codes there are there is some other applications which have that information and which we need to get that from that application using service calls we need to use that for every cases case processing okay so you can answer like this for suppose list of records are less we get the number of records from the service response if there are less like for suppose 2k or 2000 or 3000 then it is okay we can create the node level database and load that node level database at midnight okay once the database is expired whoever whenever the database is referred by any user then it will be created okay this will be another question you can be asked differently for this question database we have given the database expires in 24 hours and the database is expired and it will be created after expiring it will be created immediately and uh, you can be asked like i flushed the database that means the database will be removed from the clipboard right so will the database will be created immediately or not so when you when whenever interviewer asks this question you have to answer them no database will not be created immediately database will be created whenever some user is referring to the database only whenever some user is referring it checks whether the database is present fresh database is present in the clipboard or not it is if it is present it will use that one only no the database is not current it is stale or it is expired then it will regenerate if the database is not present then the database will be created so that question is simple question whenever you are asked that question you have to answer like that okay so this is how you handle the less less number of records by node level database for suppose if you have more number of records for suppose the number of records are like more than twenty five thousand records what problem we will get if we use the twenty five thousand records in a node level database see whenever we are looking into the database with twenty five thousand records it's a performance issue again when we are setting something there in the database the px results of twenty five thousand records it is going to be a performance issue so we cannot have that many records it's a big list of records we need to tell them that if the number of records are more then we can have a data table or data type in our application so what do we do we get the data from the other application after getting we store them at our end in our one data table and we can use the thread level database to fetch based on the case requirements in our case whatever the records are required we can fetch from the data table and use them for our case processing okay this is the more feasible solution when we have the low more number of records and how do we refresh this data table because it will be updated right rarely not frequently but rarely but we need to update at midnight how do we handle that one so we need to tell them that we will have a data table to store the data and we use the thread level database to fetch the data and use in our case processing and we will have one job scheduler scheduled to run daily at midnight 12 am and what this job scheduler activity will do it will make a service call get the data from the other application the response all the records we can insert into the data table so we can check if the record is updated then update that record if the record is not updated then ignore that record we can either 
update the updated records and add insert the new records and otherwise we have one more option we can truncate like we can delete the all records from the table and insert the fresh, fresh list of records response records into the data table so this is another approach if you answer like this they will understand like okay he has some good insight into the process okay friends so answer carefully whenever you are answering this might lead into different different other questions as well okay like why you may be asked why job should you do at midnight 12 am why can't you use the queue processor so interviewer wanted to test your knowledge you know we have to answer like yeah queue processor is something related to the case level work object level processing if you want to do some processing for the one work object we schedule one entry for the queue processor and it will be processed by the queue processor activities if you want to do something not related to any entries any not related to any case it's like general activity like clean up data load some generic work has to be done at that point of time then we use the job scheduler okay so you have to answer like that similarly you might be asked some other like um, questions also for suppose you you mentioned node level database right for node level data pages you will be asked differently for suppose how do you flush the node level database yeah you need to answer that question also see node level database generally what do we do is whenever there are some changes if you want to flush the database we can open the database and go and clear the flush the database we can do the flush database so i'll open and show you <coughs> one data i suppose database address list something when we go to load management here clear database is there when we click on clear database this will be cleared but this will be cleared in this node only right not on all the nodes nodes means servers so normally when you log in using the vip url vip url that means load balancer url sometimes it clears all the databases otherwise we have one function to clear all the flush all databases and from all nodes we can use the function to flush the database from the all the nodes so this is one answer and it it cannot be sim just restricted to that question you will be asked differently for node level database which access group it will be used will it be used the the user whoever refers to the database that uses the access group will be used or which access group it will be used that is one more question you will be asked one more question maybe if you are asked that question for node level database the answer will be for node level database we need to provide the access group so for loading the node level data pages we need to provide the access group and that the access group will be used to request the setup and that access group uh, uh, will be used for rule resolution to load the to execute this record to execute the um, <clears throat> the records present in the activities are something for loading the database okay and uh, reload if older than one day 23 hours 59 minutes 59 seconds something like that we give the if we give like reload if older than one day then after one day this will be like uh, this database will be like uh, expired or it's not active database then whoever refers it, it will be reloaded recreated okay yeah that is about this question and next coming to next question like if you are asked what is the difference between the obj methods and the rdb methods okay 
in olden days like this question will be asked very frequently but nowadays i don't see it much frequently this is not asking nobody is asking this question but if you are asked if someone is if an interviewer asked this question to you the answer will be in obj methods we have the obj open open by handle obj browse obj save obj delete similarly we have the rdb methods as well okay and suppose you can see rdb you mention rdb list okay rdb open rdb save rdb delete what is difference between rdb list and obj browse so understand obj browse is something will fetch the will fetch the list of records from this class data table this, this class table based on this filter conditions only from only one table only it is happening obj browse for suppose if i want to join two three classes two three tables and get the records we have one more option report definition in report definition we have the class joins option okay let me open one report definition in report definition we can do the class joins and fetch the list of records okay this is query and when i go to the inquiry these are the columns like select p these columns here in the filter conditions we give like where class this filter condition is nothing but like where class select first name last name from table where department equal to abc something like that where class is this one if i want to do the joins we can come here in the data access tab there we can give the class joins we can either do the class joins or associations and declare index joins or we can even give the sub reports sub reports is nothing but if you know the sql we have the sub queries select first name last name from the employee table where employee id in in brackets we give one more query the query results will be used in the where condition of the main query that is nothing but that sub query we have option in pega like a sub reports okay so this report definition will be used to fetch the data from list of records from multiple tables using the joins okay but even the query is complex more complex then we will go for the rdb methods you need to answer like if the query is simple from one table we will browse if query is a little complex from doing the joins we go for the report definition if the query is more complex which we cannot achieve using the report definition or the obj browse or obj open in that situation we will go for the rdb methods so rdb list we use the rdb list method to fetch the records list of records from the complex query for that if our rdb methods we need to give the provide the connect sql rule you need to provide the connect sql rule okay let me go to the records and in integration connectors open the connect sql okay this is one connect sql let me open one connect sql how it is yeah if you see here we have the different tabs in the connect sql rule open delete save browse if you give like four queries this is for opening query one complex query for deleting one complex query save and it is for browsing like a obj browse we give like four queries here and if you want to execute only one browse this query only then in activity we use the rdb list and give the connect sql rule details here when we execute this rdb list will open the in the connect sql rule whatever the query present in the browse tab that query will be executed if you use the rdb save the query present in the save tab here that will be used okay so the answer for the question is rdb methods will be used for the complex queries some stored procedures complex queries if you want to execute them we go for the rdb methods now currently mostly we are not using the obj methods 
we are mostly using the rd report definition for fetching the records or in some places we are using the saveable database to save otherwise we are using the for our cup that we are using the uh, commit with error handling okay obj save is using rarely also and uh, mm, <coughs> rdb methods will be used for the complex queries this is the answer to this question okay next next question are like uh, what are the different types of activities okay so for this question when we go to in the activity when i go to the security tab okay if you see here activity type is there by default it it will have the activity activity type okay so when we click on this here we have different types of activities so this is the question they are asking why do we have these many types of activities and which type will be used for what that is their intention mostly we don't need to you don't need to remember all these types only remember like four five and answer them like i remember these types and we will use this one but learn about the each type if something for suppose the activity is nothing but like a activity other than all these types and we use utility most frequently we use the utility utility in flow we have a utility shape that means in the flow processing if you want to execute some activity some logic has to be executed then we create an activity we give the type as utility and we in flow we gave the shape utility shape and mention refer this activity so in the case processing in the flow processing that activity utility shape utility type activity will be executed okay utility you can mention utility and trigger we we have the declare trigger right in declarative de trigger in declare trigger rule the activity that we give is the trigger type and we have the declare on change for declare on change we have the on change type activity notify for notify in flow we for notify shape we give the notify activity and route route is in assignment shape for the case should be routed to either work list or work basket that kind of that kind of logic execution can happen in activity and we call that type of activity as a route activity so this will be on the flow assignment shape we give this route type of activity assign also same like assign in flow assignment shape we give a assign type of activity and asynchronous like parallel processing load database we give this rule connect for integration rule connects we give rule connect type of activity for validate we give the validate activity so these are the different type of activities but you don't need to remember all you can mention like utility activity declare trigger trigger on change and uh, you can mention like route that's it those are sufficient we use those only mostly remaining all if you ask like why do you use the validate so do the some kind of to execute some kind of validation so we can create the activity of type of validate and do the validations on the work of data on the record okay yeah that is the about the different types of activities okay and in the activities here in the this security tab we have these options i'd like to discuss about these options also okay so here normally activity whenever we create one activity we get one guardrail warning saying that don't use the the activities okay this is security warning not security warning let me save it so if you see here activity use is the guardrail warning that means it is saying use of activity should be limited don't use more the activities instead you can use the data transforms also case management engine api declarative rules you can use them but limit the using of the activities this guardrail warning if you if you get this kind of guardrail warnings more our guardrail score will be reduced if you have the low low guardrail score that means our we had, we did not built our pega application up to the pega standards pega norms 
so we did not follow the pega rules pega guardrail rules that we have we did not follow properly so normally what do we do is to avoid this guardrail warning activity use we change the type of the activity to utility and save it when we save it we will we, we don't get that activity use type this warning is for unit warning means whenever we create few types of rules like data transform when rule activity it will ask to create a test case so this is okay this is not not it this is just a warning info warning okay now we have one checkbox okay for suppose here require authentication to run if i unselect the checkbox don't i don't need the authentication to run this activity then we get one more guardrail warning it says to prevent the unauthenticated access you need to check the checkbox so i select the checkbox so that without authentication this activity will not be executed we have one checkbox here okay allow invocation from browser if you want to execute this activity directly from the browser we can allow it here okay when i save it see we are getting error here in latest versions earlier we get the guardrail warning not error now it is not even allowing what it is saying to invoke you need at least one privilege should be secured with a privilege privilege is nothing but like a one ticket you need to have to um, watch the movie if you want to enter into the movie you need a ticket something like that if you want to execute this one you need to have this privilege okay so if you give some privilege something we have a list of privileges when i save it now the terror is gone okay so if you want to invoke from directly browser you need to have the privilege okay these are the few interview questions that will be asked okay thank you friends and uh, we will meet in our next video with few more interview questions okay talk to you later bye